Hey folks, this is David with Screaming Relativity, home of the Astro DNA Observatory. And heck, it has been cold in January. And uh, I don't know, in my old age, I have a hard time getting out there and uh, even in an observatory environment. So I've decided to take on a project that I've had in mind for some time, which is uh, building back this reflector. This is a, a Newtonian reflector. It's a 12-inch primary mirror, but uh, that means that the OTA is about uh, 46 inches long and the outer diameter of the OTA is around 14 inches. This thing weighs about 50 pounds. And uh, I bought this uh, used as part of the rescue effort for the observatory that I have. And it is a wreck and it needs a complete and total uh, rebuild. So in this video we're going to first tear it down into its components of thing and what we'll wind up with is this pile of parts on the table here and in subsequent videos we'll take each of those components and we'll rehab them and then ultimately we'll reassemble this telescope into brand new condition and we'll deploy it in the observatory just to see how it performs. So why do this? Well, because Newtonian reflectors are awesome telescopes. They're really about as simple as you get in terms of tele you know, telescope design. The optics are mirrors. So it's literally just aligning your primary and secondary mirror, making sure you have good collimation, and voila, you have a very fast 12-inch uh, telescope. And at f4, it produces a 1200 millimeter focal length, which is a nice, you know, kind of upper mid uh, focal length to be imaging at. And with a reducer corrector, we could probably get that down uh, under a thousand, closer to 800 millimeters. So very versatile telescope, huge light bucket. Okay, we're going to start by removing all the accessories from the OTA, beginning with the focuser. Now, this focuser is a three and a quarter inch focuser with both coarse and fine control, which is pretty nice. It is a TPO brand, and it supports two inch eyepieces as well as one and a quarter inch eyepieces with an adapter. To remove it from the OTA, you're going to need to access four screws too easy to reach and too hard to reach you probably need a right angle phillips head screwdriver to do this uh, more, most comfortably the screws mate to uh, some hexagon nuts on the inside of the ota you can see them pictured here on the focuser that's been removed so you'll have to reach in and hold those uh, hexagon nuts while you loosen the Phillips head screws from the outside. Just be careful you don't want to drop that hexagon nut onto your primary mirror and this is why I do it with the OTA kind of level on a tabletop so in the event that it falls it'll it, it most likely will not travel back to the primary mirror. Keep in mind the lower right is a little bit tough to get at so I removed the find and course control so that I can get a little bit of better angle with a straight Phillips head screwdriver. Other than that this is a very simple process so just take your time make sure that as you're loosening those screws you get your hand inside the OTA so that you can catch those hexagon nuts and uh, make sure you protect your primary mirror and uh, once they're off you have a hole in your tube. You also have a focuser, some bolts, and some nuts and what I like to do is store everything together and take some notes on uh, how everything goes together and what my intent is in terms of uh, uh, any rehab work that I'm going to do. So that's what you see me doing here. Okay, on to the Telrad, which is an alternative to a traditional finder scope. And it's been quite some time since I've used a Telrad, and I look forward to restoring it. The Telrad is connected to, to, to a Telrad mounter by uh, loosening two thumb screws, and then the Telrad will slide right out. Now, uh, beyond that, the Telrad mount uh, mounting device is actually attached to the OTA using double-sided uh, tape. So I'm just going to take a razor and cut that out, and uh, we'll have our Telrad separated from the OTA. Okay, so next up, I actually tackle the secondary mirror housing and the spider assembly rather than the clamshell surrounding the OTA. That clamshell is attached to a Los Mundi D plate and it gives a little bit of stability. I don't want the tube rolling around while I work with the mirrors. So removing the secondary 
is a, a in my case I'm going to remove the entire uh, the entire assembly including the spider arms I will know that these spider arms are actually aluminum they're not plastic um, and this is a quality assembly here now to remove it you'll notice that I'm working little by little the thumb screws on the outside of the OTA those thumb screws thread into the fins of the spider assembly now do this very carefully because as you free up these thumb screws that spider assembly it becomes uh, freely rotating and by the time you get to about the second thumb screw removed uh, you don't want that uh, that assembly to start to swing potentially fall um, it's not likely it would fall and hit the, the primary mirror at this angle but certainly the secondary mirror could hit the inside of the OTA so notice how I'm going to grab the uh, assembly and uh, hold it carefully as I remove each of the thumbnails once the thumbnails are uh, well, thumb screws are all removed uh, the assembly as you can see will fall freely and you know that was a good catch on my part otherwise we would have had a, a problem with our secondary mirror <laughs> Okay, it's onto the primary mirror, and uh, did this in, in a couple of steps. First, uh, I wanted to remove the clamshell rings that surround the OTA, and keep in mind that's instantly going to uh, introduce some instability. This is now just a rolling tube on a, on a table, and with most of the weight sitting in the rear, of the telescope which is where the primary mirror and housing are so this you really need to be very careful uh, about how you approach this and uh, separate the OTA from the clamshell rings um, get it balanced on the tabletop and then I go ahead and I set up um, a couple of um, uh, pieces of wood from a pallet uh, just below the tabletop so that I can lower the OTA primary pr primary mirror facing down onto these uh, pallet blocks. Now I do that because there are knobs uh, on the back of the telescope that are used to secure the OTA to its house, uh, I'm sorry, the housing, uh, the primary mirror housing to the OTA, as well as adjustments to the tilt of the, of the mirror. So um, you don't want those sitting on the floor, you want them kind of elevated off the floor and those pallet boards help me with that. So if you have two people, I recommend it. If not, just be very careful uh, while doing this. And once we get the OTA balanced on those boards, we can go ahead and begin to release the housing from the OTA. And surprisingly, this is done with just a couple of uh, Phillips head screws. And, um, you know, it, 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 you would think that it was something more precise than that, but, but it, it really isn't. So what I do is I just work the screws one opposite the other. And as you're loosening the screws, you will notice that the OTA feels like it's kind of uh, unflexing. And uh, I kept the retaining ring on the front of the tube uh, so that the shape of the OTA won't get too disturbed as I release the primary mirror housing. But at any rate, um, do this systematically until all the screws are released, pull the screws away from the OTA, and then you'll be able to lift the OTA off of the primary mirror and um, safely. And uh, then you'll have your primary mirror in its housing left on, the, on those boards. Okay, folks, and uh, here we see it, the fruits of our labor, all of the components and parts that make up this Newtonian reflector are on the table. Um, the OTA is going to need to be resurfaced, and, uh, and pr I'm probably going to paint it uh, to a color that I prefer. Uh, obviously, there's work to be done on the mirrors. The mirrors are filthy and uh, so we'll be cleaning those thoroughly, and, uh, and then I'm going to 
take a look at this focuser a little bit more closely and determine whether or not it's uh, going to be suitable for the camera weights that I'm going to be attaching to it. I think it will be, but I'm, I'm going to test that out to be sure. We'll also spend some time with the Telrad and see if we can't get that into a functional state. At any rate, this was a great video. I hope you enjoyed it. I really enjoyed making it. And if you are into astronomy and all things astrophotography, go ahead and subscribe. Uh, if you own a Newtonian reflector, stay tuned. I have several videos coming out as a follow-on to this teardown. So with that, I will see everybody on the next video.